Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you about a brand new type of block available in Squarespace websites called a shape block. This allows us to create different shapes with their own unique colors and layer them with other pieces of content on our Squarespace website. So in this video, I'll give you an overview on how to add this brand new shape block to your site, what your design options are, and I'll show you just a little bit of custom CSS that you can use to change up the way that this block actually looks on your own website. We're going to change up the shape and give it a unique border with a little bit of custom code. Now, all of this is done in Squarespace version 7.1, specifically in a fluid engine section. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can understand exactly what the heck I mean by that. You ready? Let's dig in. So here we are inside Squarespace, and I'm going to hop into edit mode here. I wanted to mention this is specific for fluid engine sections. If you have a section in your Squarespace website and it says add block on the top left hand side, you're using a fluid engine section. You can also press G on your keyboard to see the grid, and that's another indicator that, yep, you're using fluid. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a shape. We're going to change the shape and color. We're going to add a drop shadow. We're going to add an image layer, and then we're going to customize it with code. Starting with adding the shape, let's go ahead and add the block. I'm going to click this option right here and scrolling down to the bottom, you'll see shape is the very last option because it's the latest block added to Squarespace. I'll go ahead and click on that. And here we go. I'm going to pull this over a bit just so we can see it a little more clearly. All right, let's go ahead and edit this shape. This option right here will open up the design menu for the shape block, or you can just double click on it. And here we go. Now at the very top, our first option is to change the actual shape. You've got a lot of different shapes to choose from. You've got some cool bursts. We've got uh, the little egg shape down here, an arch shape, which is a great one. Let's see, we've got a triangle. We've got so many options here, lots of fun stuff to choose from. I'll go ahead and select circle so you can see what the second option does. Right here, I've toggled on stretch and you'll notice it's stretching to all edges of that actual block. If I adjust the size of this shape, do you see how the circle actually changes? Now, if we make it wide again, the circle will change. That's because we have stretch enabled. If I toggle that off, it will be a one-to-one -one ratio. Toggling that on will stretch. Toggling it off will be one-to-one. -one. And again, this applies to any shape. This would be a square. However, if I select stretch, it'll stretch it out to be a rectangle to fill the size of that block. Pretty cool, right? All right, now after that, we've got the option for color. This can be anything from your color palette, or you can select custom and grab any color you want. You can use this slider here to select one, type in your own hex color code right here, or even choose an RGB or HSL. Lots of cool options there. I also love that our color palette's right here so we can easily grab a color we already have. I'll go back to that light blue, there we go. Now after that, we've got one more option and that's our drop shadow. I love this new feature. If we toggle on drop shadow, let's scroll down, we can change the angle, distance, blur, and color. Being this light blue, it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to change this first. We'll change it to a solid black, and now you can see the shadow. If I increase the distance, check it out. Look at that shadow move. Let's go ahead and change the blur. Pretty interesting. We can even change the angle, dragging this to a different direction so it looks like there's a different light source creating this shadow. All kinds of fun options built right into this block type. Again, you can adjust the color choosing your color palette or selecting your own custom color. Let's say we want a purple shadow for this block. There we go, all kinds of options. But again, your color palette is right here as well. So you can choose one of these instead, totally up to you. Adjusting the angle, distance, and blur. And again, that's drop shadow. I've just toggled that on. Let's say you create one and you don't like it, toggle it off and it'll go right back to the way that it was. Now, I'm glad this popped up because I forgot to mention, if you do choose the square option for your shape, you can adjust the border radius of the corners here. I'll show you what that means. Let's say I type in 90, that'll curve the edges of those corners by 90 pixels or 90 PX. I can also choose this option and adjust each corner manually. Let's say I want two of them to be 90 degree angles and the other two to be curved. I can create my own shape using those options. I'll go ahead and put this back to zero and it'll go right back to the rectangle we had before. All right, that's it for your walkthrough of the design menu. We've changed the shape and the color. We've added the drop shadow. Now let's add an image layer. I'm gonna select block and we'll go ahead and grab an image. Clicking this plus sign here, I'm gonna grab one that's already uploaded to my site. I've got a PNG of this paintbrush here, and now I can drag it over and place it on top of the square. 
Now we're creating layers here. I can either stretch it over to the side so it takes up the full space and will be perfectly centered on this shape, or I can even drag it down here a little bit and make some really neat layered effects so it's not quite on top of the shape. Lots of fun options. Definitely play around with your design styles there. You have all kinds of customizations. Now, before we hop into customizing it with code, I do want to mention, let's take a look at the mobile version of this page section. We're using a Fluid Engine section so we can edit mobile separately. If we scroll down here, you'll notice the paintbrush is beneath the shape that we've added. Let's go ahead and pull that back up so it's slightly overlapped and it was over to the sides. So we're going to do that. There we go. I'll pull it down a little more. Now it'll look like the desktop version. You can also change the shape here if you want to make it slightly smaller, maybe not as wide. You've got all kinds of options that edit just the mobile version of your site. If we go back to desktop. You'll notice this hasn't changed. It's exactly the way that it was before. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's go ahead and customize this shape with a little bit of code. I'm going to select save and we'll navigate to design and scroll down to custom CSS. Now the code I'm about to share is listed below, but the selector that the shape goes by is SQS shape. Pretty simple, right? Let's go ahead and give it a unique border. I'll say 5px solid red. And now my rectangle has that border of solid red. My shape block has a border. I want you to pay close attention here. I'm going to zoom in on my screen. Can you see that that paintbrush PNG icon we have is overlapping that border? That's because that was the highest layer. The, the shape was placed underneath that paintbrush PNG. So that icon is going to be above the border. Pretty cool, right? Awesome. Now let's do one more trick that I absolutely love. Let's go ahead and change the angle of this shape. I'm going to add a semicolon and I'm going to say transform, rotate. And how about we do negative five degrees? Now we've tilted the shape by five degrees. Pretty cool, right? What if we change that to 10 degrees in the other direction? Totally different shape. You can customize the rotation of that shape using CSS. Again, I've listed 10 DEG, which is 10 degrees. Now there's one more code that I wanted to show you, and that is changing the color on a hover. I'm going to say SQS shape hover, and then I'll say background color. And how about we make it now when we hover over that shape with our cursor, it turns pink. Pretty cool, right? All kinds of fun options with custom CSS using the selector SQS shape. Now I do want to mention if you're using a shape that isn't this rectangle or square, the border code might come out a little bit funky. So focus on transform, rotate, and the hover effect for creating that background color change. You can also change the border color on a hover too. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll say border color and we'll change it to purple. And now when I hover over it, we've got a pink background and a purple border, all kinds of fun stuff. Now one last thing I wanted to show you about customizing this specific shape with code is how to target just the individual shape. Let's say you have more than one shape on your website, you're gonna to wanna to grab its block ID. I have a Chrome extension linked in the description below that will display block IDs in Squarespace, not an affiliate, just a fan. I'm gonna turn off that Chrome extension and here in my code, I'm gonna add that block ID at the very beginning of the code here, add a space and then say SQS shape. This tells the browser, when you see this block of content, if there's a shape in it, do this code. So I want you to isolate it by adding the block ID if you have more than one shape and you don't want this effect to happen for every single shape on your website. This will isolate it to just that one individual shape. We're still going to get the same hover effect there. We've still got the border, but only that shape is going to change. Once you're done with your code, select save and you'll be good to go. Alrighty, that's it for your overview of the shape block now available in Squarespace 7.1. The CSS codes that I shared are linked in the description below, so you can copy and paste those into your own site and customize them so they look amazing. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a like and a comment and definitely subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new tutorial every week and I want to make sure you catch the latest. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. To learn more about all the cool things you can do with Squarespace, head on over to InsideTheSquare.co. There you'll find hundreds of free tutorials just like this one. That's InsideTheSquare.co.